Welcome back to my channel, I'm Jay Malone, and today we're gonna to take a photo that looks like this and turn it into one that looks like this. Here recently I posted a photo on Facebook and Instagram, and some people had some questions about how I achieved the look of that photo. And today I'm gonna to do my best to show you how I get this look. One thing to note is when I'm taking these pictures, I normally try to photograph the image with my edit in mind. Therefore, I try to make sure that my highlights are not too blown out. I try to make sure that my shadows may, be, may even be a little underexposed. That way I can boost the exposure later. But I always try to shoot with the edit in mind, knowing what I want to do with the image. In this instance, the image was shot just auto white balance because I knew that I could change it in post-production. I wasn't shooting a series of these images, so the white balance didn't have to remain the same during these. So therefore, this was a quick shot. I took out my camera real quick, had it on auto white balance, uh, photographed the image because I knew that in Adobe Camera Raw, I could make the changes that I needed to. This particular image was shot with my Canon 5D Mark III with my Canon 24 to 70 millimeter lens on it. I edit with Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Photoshop. I know a lot of people ask why I don't use Lightroom. I just never have cared for Lightroom. If you use it, that's great. Uh, it's just kind of personal preference, what you get used to. And I'm a lot more familiar with Adobe Camera Raw. So that's what I'm gonna edit in today. As you can see, the image here in Camera Raw, um, it, it's, it's very cool looking. The color doesn't look great. The exposure's not uh, correct. So we're going to try to edit that so we can achieve that same look or very similar to the look uh, that I achieved when I posted the original image. So we're going to right click or secondary click on the image and open in Camera Raw. Here you'll see we have the flexibility of changing the exposure, contrast, highlights, several different things. And um, we also have the white balance. So that's what we are going to work on first. Uh, we're going to take this white balance and instead of as shot at 6600 Kelvin, we're going to up this kind of to where it looked like when I shot it. So I'm going to go somewhere down here, uh, let's say somewhere about 11,000 there. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to take this tent up. I'm gonna push this all the way up to somewhere in this ballpark here. Okay, that looks closer to the way that it looked when I photographed the image. Now we're going to take the exposure. I'm gonna pull my exposure down a little. Um, well, I want to try to keep as much detail in those clouds that I can. So we're going to pull the exposure down here somewhere about that. Uh, that looks pretty good. I can. Uh, see some detail in the clouds now, and I'm a sucker for clouds, so that's kind of what I shoot for in these edits. I want the clouds to pop. The contrast, I'm gonna leave the same. I'm gonna take my highlights now, and I'm gonna pull my highlights down. That's gonna give us more detail in the clouds. Um, in fact, I may go ahead and go all the way down with my highlights, uh, and the shadows, I'm probably going to go all the way up with the shadows. Yeah, let's do that there. So the highlights all the way down, the shadows all the way up. And as you can see right now, there's a drastic difference in the image. You can see detail in the sky and you can see detail in the tractor and the ground. Uh, so this is closer to what my eyes was seeing. Uh, the camera just does not have the dynamic range that the human eye does. So therefore, um, yeah, you kind of have to do this in post-processing. Uh, so you can get the image to look closer to the way that it looked to your eye. I probably bring my blacks down just a little bit to give me a little more contrast. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there, negative eight. Um, now, here is the clarity slider, and the clarity slider can do wonders or it can wreak havoc on a photo. So um, for portraits, I rarely ever use the clarity slider. But for something like this, I think clarity will do pretty well. We're going to take the clarity up here, now somewhere around 55, 54, 55. There we go. And we are going to also boost some vibrance. 
Let's see, it looks pretty good somewhere. Oh, about the 60, I believe. Bump it a little more maybe. There we go, 65, I like that. And I may even add just a little more saturation. There we go, I have the saturation and the vibrance and the clarity boosted and this image already looks um, uh, just about finished actually. It looks so much better. Uh, I am gonna give a little bit of sharpening to it. So I'm gonna grab the sharpening here and I'm gonna raise it up to about 45. 46, that's close enough. Uh, the detail, I will also go in here and uh, raise up just a little bit. And here's something that we do with the masking. If you hold down the Alt or the Option key and then drag this mask up, you can see kind of what it is affecting. So I'm going to increase this mask up to where it's just kind of affecting the edges of the tractor, um, the detail on the tires, and also the edges of the clouds in the sky. Uh, let off of the Alt Option key and then let off your mouse button and that way you've not over sharpened the image on areas that didn't need sharpening. Your edges and the detail is where you need the sharpening. So let's take a look at what we have already done with this image. There you can see the before and after and wow what a difference that that image has taken on here. And believe it or not the after is what my eye was seeing. Uh, that's closer to, to what I seen with my eye. Even though I couldn't achieve that with the camera I knew that in post-processing, I could achieve um, that same look or very close to the look uh, with a little bit of processing. And that's pretty much all that I would do in Camera Raw. Once you're finished with that, click Done. Now what we have been working with is a raw image out of the camera. I highly suggest when you're shooting, shoot on raw, not JPEG, because you have a lot more flexibility with raw images than you do JPEG images. So now that we have these changes, these changes have been applied um, to this raw image, but physically not changed that file yet. Now we need to make a JPEG image out of this raw image. That way all of the changes will take effect. This is the way that I make JPEGs. Whichever images you want to create JPEGs out of, if it's just one or multiple images, make sure they're highlighted. Then you go up to Tools, go to Photoshop, image processor. Once it opens Photoshop, you can see here, here are some changes you can make. I pretty much have these set and I don't make any changes. I have it to where it is going to save it as a JPEG, the quality level 10. Um, I also have it to where if you go up here to number two, it's saving in the same location. It'll create a new folder, a JPEG folder, but it'll save it in that same location. Also have it set to convert profile to sRGB. Also have Jay's Photography and my website set for the copyright info there. That's up to you if you wanna put anything there or not. But if all of that is fine, and like I said, I set this and that's the same thing that I do every time, so I don't have to go in and make any changes to this. I always just click Run. And as you can see, it will open up the image and it's already finished. You didn't even see the image open up. But now if I go back to uh, Adobe Bridge or the Adobe Camera Raw, if you're viewing it here in Bridge, you make the changes in Adobe Camera Raw. But you'll see that there is a JPEG folder here. Once you click on that, you will see the JPEG image. Now if you want to open this in Photoshop to do some more to it, you can. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how I would tweak this in Photoshop before I posted it. An easy way to open this is just right click and tell it to open with Photoshop. Okay, as you can see here, we have the image open in Photoshop. Now, there is something that I'd like to do. I'd like to add a little vignette around this image. So this is the way that I'm going to do it. I, I've used this method for a while. It works well for me. Um, there's, there's always a hundred different ways to do one task in Photoshop. So it's kind of whatever you get used to and how you want to do it but we're gonna add a little bit of vignette. I'm gonna select the marquee tool, and as you can see, you can choose rectangular, elliptical, single. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on the elliptical. And once you have that selected, I'm gonna kinda of draw me out of oval here. 
around the tractor. I'm going to let go. I'm going to go up to select inverse and I'm going to right click out here in the middle of this selection. Right click and feather. I'm going to have that at 200. I'm not sure what yours will be set at. Um, yeah, I already done this so uh, it was set at 200. I'm going to leave it there at 200. Tell it OK. Now you have a soft or a feathered selection around this image. I'm now going to add an adjustment layer. If you go right down here to the bottom, you will see this uh, little circle with half dark, half white. Click on it and I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. Now I added that adjustment layer and you can't really see any changes except you can see it created a mask from that selection. Now if we go to this uh, levels tool here, I'm going to take my levels and my midpoints. You can select either the, the shadows, the highlights, or the midpoints. I'm going to select the midpoints. I'm going to bring them down just a little bit. You can see the image. You can see how it affects it. We'll go all the way down to show you. You can see now where that mask is on that image. But we don't want that, so we're going to take this up here and we're going to add just a little bit to where it looks good to me. This is all personal preference, how much of a vignette you want. This is just gonna draw your eye to the tractor, to the subject uh, of your image. So we're gonna leave it kind of right there. We can turn this on and off, I'll hide this, turn the layer on and off, and you can see how much that is. Now, if uh, you realize that it's too much and, and you don't need uh, that much of a vignette, you can double click right here. You can always open that back up or there's another way to do it. I sometimes will go to the opacity and I will take my opacity and bring my opacity down. So let's bring that down now to about 83%. Uh, now when you turn it off and on, you can see it did make a difference there. And that is pretty much all that I would do with an image like this. Uh, again, this was just a quick, simple edit to kind of show you how I achieve the look that I do in these images. Uh, that way you can see the most detail in the clouds and, and also see detail in the shadows as well. Um, once you have this complete, I would flatten this image, multiple ways of doing that. I usually right click on the background layer and tell it to flatten image. Now once I have this image flattened, I can save this image and now I have that saved as a JPEG. If you're going to post this image on social media, you may want to resize it so it uh, is optimized for Instagram or optimized for Facebook. Um, that way it will upload quicker as well. That's pretty much it guys. I hope that this helped uh, in some way. Uh, see how I edit these images that I post to Facebook. Uh, I post a lot of random photos to Facebook. Lots of skies, lots of clouds, uh, so I'm always looking for detail in the clouds. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much it. Um, if you like this video, be sure and hit the thumbs up. Uh, also, leave me a comment down below. Uh, let me know what type of photos you'd like to see edited next, uh, whether it be portraits or uh, more images like this. And if you think more information like this would be helpful, please consider subscribing. That way you can see the new content that we post. And if you click the little bell icon, you'll be notified with an email or with a push notification when I post a new video. Hope you enjoyed it guys, and until next time, God bless.